introduction, and then Tyrus will speak to you about some of his pieces, or all of them, whichever he feels like. Um, Tyrus has been a really important part of the local Chinese American community. That's why we felt like it was really important that we include a retrospective of his work as part of the opening of this museum and one of our first exhibits. It's definitely our most popular exhibit right now, and that's why we've extended it over and over again. Um, and you just made it. It's closing in the next week. So, the work that you're going to see in this exhibit comes from the, the span of Tyrus's life, and he's been very prolific. He's turning 94 in two weeks. <laughs> he shares Picasso's birthday. <laughs> um, and the work that you're going to see in this exhibit comes from his days at school at Otis Art Institute, um, including the work that he did at Disney Studios, work from Warner Brothers Studios, Christmas cards that he worked on um, for 25 years, made up to 50 images per year, so we have three of them, and um, so you're going to see some of the work that he did in his commercial career, work that he did on the side, including some of the kites that he's been making for the past two dozen years in his retirement. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Tyrus so he can tell you about his work. Thank you. Well, when she said 94 years old, you think, boy, that's pretty good, isn't it? But <laughs> yesterday, I woke up there and I fell flat on my face. We can see oh. that. So I had to see a doctor and see whether they did the cocaine or not. So 90, 94 years old, this isn't fun anymore. <laughs> but anyway, I never had an audience, so many people come and look at my work. I wish my mother was here. So you have to see this. But anyway, uh, my painting, or oh, I don't know, some people look at it kind of strange and this and that and so forth. Because I'm being Chinese, I can't help it that my painting influenced uh, you know, had a Chinese influence. When I was a kid, I used to at the scholarship at Otis Art Institute, and every night when I go back to Chinatown, I always stop at the library and look at the Sun period painting. And that's why I'm such a, you know, all my painting had a Chinese influence for that reason. And uh, well, anyway, just like this two here, won't you? you can tell what that is, don't you? Huh? You say east and west, right? Top you? Yes. 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 But we can't afford ink in new thing. So we're using old new, newspaper and then dip it in water and paint that. Every night, you practice that. You know. Even if even you sleep and you pull me out of bed, you practice that before, before you go to bed. So, so that way, my work will be influenced by you know, Chinese brush stroke, you might say. And then there's such a thing as, well, son, that brush stroke is dead. It's no good, no life. I want something to really have life. That you can really have life, this posture, because that means something to you. Something you find, and then he hate. He used to, you know, how kid, he loved to play baseball and things like that, you know. And if you see me, he probably see me alive. <laughs> he said, I don't want you to do that. And I said, why? And he said, what did you bring one of your fingers? It would your whole life. At that time, I thought, gee, boy, he's so a strict father, you know. But now, I think back, he's right, you know. He had, he had a meaning behind him, you know. So for well, anyway, I uh, am I boring you with all this or not? No, no. So, no. Well, the reason how I get started in this painting, when I was a kid, I always loved to draw and paint. That's the only thing I like to do. You know. So I draw and paint, and I went to uh, I was in Sacramento, uh, um, uh, William McKinney School, uh, you know. Grammar school and so forth. So uh, I, I just hated that. I really take when it comes to Tony, I have to take my shoes off to start counting. 
I look good at all in room tape. Although most of the Asian are very, very good, that's why so many were going to computers and so forth, because they're very, very good. But yours truly is dumb as an I'm not good at So I paint is the only thing I like, and so I can read. So I stopped playing hooky back in San Juan. And then they sent a report card to my father, which he lived in Los Angeles. And then, uh, and then he had the okay report card, but he can't read it. Between fair and fair. <laughs> can't read, I thought keep that way quick. But this is one of had somebody that know what the report card is. Translate it to him. He says, he said, Mr. Wong, your son is no good. He said, what? He absent so much. He, he doesn't go to school. He absent for a month, two months, three months. He absent, he could get promoted. Boy, he was so mad. He sent $20 to back in Sacramento. You take the first train to the school. So I take the first train. And before I got a sense at home, for like, what? <laughs> And a suitcase fly open, socks and everything. They said, never mind, don't pick it up. So I went back to, to the store in, uh, in uh, LA, you know. I was crying. And then he said, just give a lecture, you know, just because I'm not in Sacramento, I'm going to watch you. You go and, you know, you play hookies and so forth, you can't get promoted. You know? I'm very, very ashamed of you. So I was crying. I wanted a kid. Uh, I named him Paul Wong, but not related. You know, Wong is just like Brown you know, <laughs> or Smith. So he said, well, what, what's the matter with son? He said, oh, so we explained to him that I was, you know, the good, you know, I play hooky and so forth. He said, why don't you have him come to uh, Pasadena? We live in a Methodist church. You know, every Sunday we go to church. And then we had a, we had a dormitory. Right next to we had about six people live, six kids, most of a house boy, I think that. And some go to Caltech. You know, so all different kind of, uh, you know, uh, all different talent. Uh, most were housework, you know. But I go, went to there for a while, and then go to uh, Benjamin and Frank at Junior High School in Pasadena. I was interested always, oh, you know, the, the fire prevention weeks, and then I make the posters and so forth. And I love to do that, you know, sort of doing that. So I paint all the posters from. And then finally, the, the principal said, Tyler, you seem to like to draw and paint. I said, that's the only thing I like to do. He said, how oh, well, did I get a scholarship? The was a, a scholarship? What is a scholarship? I don't know what a scholarship is. <laughs> and she said, well, if they accept your work, that means you can go there for free. I said, you mean I don't have to pay anything? She said, yes. I said, gee, this is great, you know. So I think I need to copy a uh, postcard, you know, get postcard and copy and you know, battleships and things like ocean line and copy the big painting. You know. So take it all the oldest and Carl Harmon's seen as a dean in the school. And he looked at it, they asked uh, one of the Japanese artists in there. He said, Charlie, what do you think of this young man's work? You know, he's applying for a scholarship. And there's a man a few words. He said, oh. <laughs> what, what, what about this one, Charlie? Oh. <laughs> what about this one? You know, I for a man, I thought he was an Indian, you know. <laughs> he, didn't say, he didn't say yes or no or lousy or terrible or good or anything. He just said, oh. But anyway, how is he? He was so nice to me, I guess. I guess it must be out of cute little boy or something like that. He said, well, we give you a scholarship for one term. So one term, about equivalent to about, what, three months or something like that term, you know? So I worked really hard at it, you know. Really worked hard at it, hard at it, and then eight hundred years old, you turn this up now. You have to go back to junior high, finish junior high school in past year. Gee, my heart just dropped right down to I think I stepped on it. And he said, yeah, I don't want to go back there. This is what I want is right here. And he said, well, in that case, you have to pay a tuition. Oh, well, I said, how much would that be? He said, well, it would be about $90 in those days. He said, you couldn't go to college nowadays, you know, run a thousand. And told him my father, that was during depression time. You know, $90, that was a lot of money, you know. And he said, gee, son, I'm sorry. I want you to be an artist, but I can't afford that $90. So I said, what I can do, he said, he said, I can ask all my friends and see. So I asked some of the friends that worked in a mutual market, you know, they were doing very well, you know, in the mutual market and so forth. And the being came from the same village. So he managed to give up $90. And son, here's $90. You can go back to oldest, hard into, into, you know, for $90. 
the cafeteria, they had a lady, a Mrs. Embry, white hair, just like a Norman Rockwell type of a <laughs> color type of lady. Real nice, she's very, very nice, you know. So it's very, very nice to me, and then, so I was got a job helping as a bus boy during lunch hour, and I like mop the floor and wash the dishes, but I got all the all the leftover there, so I got plenty of meat. <laughs> so I told my father, I said, well, in case something I don't come back to Chinatown, don't worry about me. I'm gonna stay there overnight, and because of the night class too, so I go night class, day class, and so I just love to do one thing. So, so after two, and then I threw the smart over and took me sleep there in the morning, and I clean up and so forth. Say, so in art, one thing about uh, uh, in an art class, I don't know, I don't even know. They used to suppose, suppose a model had a model standing, so they all had a can, you know, had an easel over here. You know? So they mark, mark that the, the easel. So next morning, come on, know exactly what the position is, you know. So the floor is just full of. You know, all different colors, very interesting. Mark for the marking. And we hired her as a, as a custodian there, so I helped him, you know, mop the floor and clean up and so forth and so forth. So at night I wash the dishes and I get my meal free. And, 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 and then lunch hour I was a bus for. So I was there for scholarship the first year. First year I got scholarship, bang, 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 bang. Four years after I don't have to pay a penny. I have to pay the one term. I really worked hard at it. You know. I had a lot of experience, very funny experience. I don't want to go into that. That's, that's a bit, very funny and very, you know, like a, like, you know, like a woman bazaar, for instance, you know. I don't know what the heck a woman bazaar is for, you know. I have to do a, do a poster for that thing like that. I don't know what else to do. So anyway, after, after that, in four years, I, you know, so I'm painting some of these all different stages. You know. From the very first sketch, I went into the oldest in one of those cases. Is the, and like this thing here, every Christmas I used to go, I had three girls, wonderful girls. So I just do this thing, take this, throw away material, anything that throw eggshell and drinking cups. And, uh, and a butter dish, and so if I make something out of it, you know, like this, it's a pill you know? So I make something out of it, but, you know, just for the kids, just for fun of it, use my imagination. They, like every Saturday, I used to go landscape sketching. I don't have a car. I don't, and then usually kind of with the student, you know, say, hey, Tyrus, you want to come around? Let's go landscape sketching. Every Saturday, we just go and, and paint. You know. I always managed to add something to it. You know. Like painting landscape, I, I sell very selective. If I don't like that brand, I eliminate it. And always add something to it. Because my philosopher in painting, the Chinese nature against man. That's why you see the Chinese landscape, all this old massive landscape, big landscape, mountain, too, mountain. And then tiny little figure down there, man against nature. That's a philosophy that I, that I never really said, you know. Say that, like a Chinese painting, uh, compared with the, with the Western painting, the, the Western painting, everything is going to come out, you know, grow out, like you're painting an apple, the teacher has to paint the apple, should be three dimensions, everything will come pulling out, you know. And the Chinese painting, push back. The landscape when it go about miles, miles away, you know. Looking down at four point perspective, you know. Looking down this way, this, but the American perspective, only one very same point. It's a big diff difference in pain. So I acquire every medium, I try oil, watercolor, uh, etching, uh, dry points, lithograph, and every, every uh, medium I try. Uh, I try everything to. Uh, to make a living at it, and very, very, I'm, I'm not a, you know, I, I'm a, my, as far as art concerned, as an artist, I, I can say, are you a great artist, consider yourself a great artist? No way. Uh, I'm, I'm a lucky artist. <laughs> I am. I'm very, very lucky. 
See, I fell into uh, to Disney studio. I got, of course, I got married. See, so I have to support my wife. So I'm getting that to Disney. Got to go over there. You know. And I happened to be that uh, I was doing in betweening. I don't know if you know anything about in betweening or not. You know, like uh, like Mickey Mouse. Wow. Raising an arm like this, see? The, the animator will do number one, maybe number five, and then down here. But I have to do number two, three, four, six, seven, eight, in between, so the, so the action moves fully. Yeah? Otherwise, it would be very jerky, right? So that's it. I hated that job. <laughs> you look into there, and then you flip the paper at the same time, and go, you know, oh boy, when I get home, I don't want my, eye, I don't want my eyeball can drop out the top, you know? <laughs> So I told my wife, I said, gee, this job is terrible. Said, but then, well, what are going to do? I said, I don't know. I, I have to figure something else, I said. And I found out they were doing Bambi. <laughs> Bambi pictures, you know. So, so I take the, uh, have the book and read the story. I feel like salt on it. Read the story. And mainly, I'm a landscape painter. Really a landscape painter. So I thought, gee, that's great. So I painted tiny little sketches, you know, about this size. You can see something in there. Else. On this side, painting in there, and then, and then walk this day. Listen, nobody interviewed to do, everybody come and walk at the studio. See, I was doing in between, nobody interviewed to me. I think I make about 16 or 19 dollars a month to do in between. You know. And then after Snow White and the Seven Girl came out, you know, the very, very ornate, you know, the pack of women, he said, see, this guy in Bambi is a little bit ethereal. There's a certain, a certain quality of life. Like, and now we're there for three and a half years of family. Mm. So that's lucky, yeah, right? So anyway, I don't want to report you. Let's go. Like this one here, that's a man and nature again. Tiny little figure here in the tree. I always in painting, in composition, I never use an even number. I always use an odd number. It's a three, five, seven, nine, so forth. To me, more interesting than, than six or four and so forth. So I don't use that. So like this one here, yeah, it's very, very calligraphic style. This is more like a traditional type of painting. You know? Like, a, like a, a farmer riding an ox and going on the way home. People flying in a, very simple. Very, very simple, one, three, and then snow, winter. You know, I try to get the feeling of very, very cold, winter, bleak feeling. And this one here, I bring it up to modern days. You know? I call the guy here, you know, with a, with an umbrella and a raincoat, and, you know, could be today, anytime. So I'm using the same idea, you know, against the rain, you know, just a few little strokes. I'm trying to get the feeling I want. You know. So this guy was struggling, you know, so rain. So this is very, very simple type of thing. So that's my philosophy of painting, right? And then like this is uh, etching. I did this uh, during the 30s. At Otis, I like to do, I think it must be the, Oh, maybe the third year there, or the last year there. See, I was influenced by Domier, see? and then this is Chinatown, and eucalyptus tree. I used to go out and do sketches of eucalyptus. That's Chinatown too. See? So this is dry point, I call it. Dry point, dry point is different from etching. Etching is using acid. And uh, this is watercolor. So there again, uh, both the Chinese painting is known as the old painting, the, the composition or S shape, usually. See, like this is the same thing. This is the, all, all my painting imagination. Way, so, you know, because uh, I, don't, I don't actually paint a thing right there to, to me, that kills your imagination. I like to use this little old brain here. <laughs> Say my oldest daughter, my second daughter, paint guy go see. Okay? It's a watercolor. So you can look at the tree and so forth. It's a great big huge tree and two tiny little figures. <laughs> this is from Disney Studio. I did this, uh, this is an actual background. It is an actual Disney background. I, I, the reason I hide because I want to write the, the, the style. And so forth, so this guy kind of thing, his work is a little bit different from uh, Snow White and so forth. So here's an old oak tree, I remember you've seen the picture now. The oak tree, remember the last, the camera pan to two leaf, you know? There were two leaf, yeah? They were talking. Wonder what happened if we're gonna fall on the ground and so far so well, you know, kind of sad in a way, you know. But anyway, the two leaves, 
So that's a set the mood, you know, very kind of a not happy mood, you know. But and this uh, after the forest the fire burned. So I'm using charcoal in it. So everything is burned very, very bleak looking. And the lonely about the fire on that side. During the fire, the sequence, during the fire, really, really good. And this is early in the morning. And then we made the charging other members stop and say, don't, don't go out there. So far, because of man and so forth and so forth. So that's it. the mood I'm creating. This thing is very, very valuable now. Because that's, uh, it's done, uh, what, 40s or something like that. Not a long time ago. So all these things, uh, all from Disney. Not the actual, it is an actual sale. It doesn't get into an actual, but it's just a certain mood for all the artists to, to follow the style. And this one, more like a Chinese type of painting, you know, landscape with the, the man in the boat and so forth. So this happened. So this one here, the first sketch I did at Otis Art Institute when I got the scholarship. A painting from a new model. I was so nervous in general, I think I... <laughs> so that's the very first sketch at Otis. And then this is the second year, I think. These are what they call five-minute sketches. You have to do them five minutes. Yeah, the time five minutes, you have to do it real fast. I'm using crayon. And then this is much later. So I can see that hand, my own hand, you know. Same drawing. And this one, using paper towel, they were doing over and over this time, doing it dirty, using paper towel. And this time in Chinatown, I make sketches, this time in Chinatown. So, and here's a, a, a self portrait. I had the whole head of hair then. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, uh, uh, I don't know, you, you know uh, S. McDonald Wright's work or not? Yes. No. Yeah, he's a terrific artist, terrific artist. I didn't go to his class, but I in greatly influenced by him. And he, the reason his work is appealed to me is because he's influenced by Chinese art. So this is from, uh, you know, that self-portrait there. Yeah, this, uh, Oh, and then, then this is uh, uh, artist. Uh, this is during the monkey period. I do a lot of monkeys, and that's the watercolor. And that was formerly owned by uh, James Wong Hao. You remember the Chinese cameraman? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, uh, he's a very, very good cameraman. So he owned that, and then since he died, his widow. This, this watercolor down in Chinatown is imagination. I saw that corner quite a bit, but I painted my imagination. The building is very rickety building, it is. and then I, I add a figure, and oh, old guy was handling it, you know. But this is an actual depiction, and with a little dog on it. I try to add a little drama. Use your imagination. You know. Don't go out and just paint exactly like you did three. Oh, look just like that. Uh, use your use your brain. And this is an effort by right too. Then I paint a new. He had a new. They call it yin. In Chinese, that means female. He painted that the Santa Barbara Museum owns it now. I talked to him, I said, gee, would you like, sure like that painting? He said, good. He said, oh, that painting, I don't know. Whoever owned that painting, in a few years, he died. Uh, yeah, he died, and so forth and so forth. Yeah. But, uh, but that painting, I was new to me. I'd rather have that than the Rembrandt. Yeah. And this is uh, uh, a but. Had a, still had an oriental influence you know, That's back in the war, much in the 40s, you know, with you know, the fishermen down here and so forth. Yeah. So it's a landscape, but yet with, with uh, oriental influence. And then there's a Dung in Chinatown. Uh, this is more Western type of thing, you know. Yeah. The Dung in Chinatown, way back in the Alpha Plaza playground, where I used to play baseball down there. And then uh, this is. Uh, Calligraphy kind of using a brush stroke painting. Yeah. This painting was uh, uh, it was a Chinese millionaire. His dining room. Let's go into his dining room. His dining room was better than my whole house. He said, "I want a couple of horses painted for the dining room." 
So I painted this one, and I, and I practiced, before I go ahead and do this, I practiced in my own bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I practiced big, big horse, and <laughs> I, personally, I think that one's better than this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. So, so that's what that is, you know. And I wrote it and he said, Paris, you, you must love horses and you write quite a bit. I said, oh, I wouldn't know how to get on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> And then this is like, uh, like this from my life class. I exaggerated. So that, that what I'm interested in is that real masculine actually. So, so that's I'm trying to suggest that. And this is imagination. Oh, another beside right, uh, Michelangelo. This is a great. You know, I was uh, I was went to art school. I mean, this is a great influence. So this is what I call it's like God of fire, you know. Like a Prometheus, out of fire. So I using these two uh, fire ring and so forth, like it was struggling and so forth. So I tried to express that feeling of a struggling. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is lithograph I done during the uh, during the, uh, what the WPA period. Mm -hmm. So that's a beggar. Was it? Yeah. So using the same brush stroke, that thing. It's trying to express a very depressed. Uh, and then like this is watercolor. Watercolor I saw a guy selling a newspaper in the great room. So I so I went home and I said, gee, that looks a wonderful stuff. I painted him by imagination. I'm trying to get that same pretty way. Yes. I'm trying to get the old coat, good shoes and so forth. I'm trying to catch the character. Still using the brush to and that's a little graph again. This is almost similar to that uh, cut of fire type of thing, except that's a little bit of Yeah. So. So am I boring you all this? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. These are all done there in uh, one of the studio. After five o'clock, when I threw the water, I went over to Pastina to do all this. So I stayed there till about nine o'clock. Yeah. And then Saturday, and this is been quite a few hours on Saturday. Because that side is the only time that I can see the people that are working. But at night, I'm the only one that pays me for you. So I do that for quite a few years for, for uh, Margaret Mears. Uh, she's the owner. She said, Margaret Gable, she needs to go to Old Zoom. She's a very good painter. Very, very good painter. That's how I get acquainted. And then when she holds the uh, uh, Greenfield part of it, I mean, Gable part of it, he said, Tyrus, come over and do the work for and so forth. So, so I do some research. Maybe, maybe just a little bit of flaw, say I can have it, but they don't pay me a salary for that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I get oh, uh, Like this thing here, you don't eat, you don't put food here, because it's scratchy. Right. Yeah. It's just, uh, they, they were only handled by a very exclusive store, and even markets and sacks of family and so forth. So, you, you know, I call that bizarre me. I mean, I, right. you know, this is for real high class people had money to burn. <laughs> So they meant those paintings. Yeah, there we go. They yeah. put another plate on top of that. Uh, on top of that, they take it for decoration, thing. They don't eat out of that, you know, really. Okay. Yeah. Gorgeous. I find it very fun to paint. For this reason, because like, a, uh, like the movie sketches, they had art directors. You know, telling you what to do and so forth. But over here, you're completely on my own. I do turn, turn out 20 designs each year, 20 new ones every year. Like this mouth and a tinsel ball. Very simple design. Right. See, without that, that doesn't mean Christmas card. With the tinsel ball, yes. See? And the funny part of it, uh, is, uh, I got fan mail from it. As a girl, he said, wrote to me, and he's Mr. Wong. I, I like to use that design with the mouse and so forth and so forth. So she was getting married. Sent her all this announcement for, for, for wedding. I can't see that myself, you know, but you get see all people, you know, translate it entirely different. So using that, this card for a wedding and anniversary or whatever, a yeah, wedding or announcement, you know? See? But this one here, the Holy Family landscape, very popular, good song because it's a religious thing. And then like this one, mail box with a Christmas uh, ornament, you know, you know uh, Christmas uh, gift and so forth. 
inside a mailbox. It's a good seller. Yeah. Some, uh, 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 oh, I designed for about 20 years. There's only one card out of the 20 years, only one card that sells over a million. Yeah, over a million cards. Not a million dollars, but a million <laughs> cards. A million cards. Yeah, yeah I wish it is a million dollars. Are, are they still available, Tyrus? Uh, no, very hard. The, the company, uh, you know, uh, kind of well, out of business. I think, I think Hallmark is still a go, Hallmark is still I was with three years with Hallmark. Mm. Yeah. I've been with one, two, three, what, about six different companies designing. Oh, my. 20 years, year, 20 design every year. Oh, my. So I have to start painting in the month of June, painting Christmas, oh. month of June. Oh. So I have to play record bingo bell or something. <laughs> yeah. Crazy, isn't it? But that, that's the way it goes, yeah. Yeah, they usually every year and they say, well, this one will show how many thousand, 35,000 or 40,000 cards considered to be a good seller. But that one card's over a million. And, and, I, and I don't care for the card myself. I would send it all myself. <laughs> Ain't it funny? Yeah, it is my favorite card. But it's over a million, so. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few. Everyone, there's a few more people that are going to be in the next room where Tyrus is going. And the first uh, one that come back up is Cartoon. This is an infant one, but that was uh, you know, a friend of mine. Uh, and he used to be at the uh, uh, Chinatown, and famous for strawberry shortcake. Yeah, the shortcake sells the hotcakes. The shortcake? Oh, yeah, the strawberry shortcake. Oh, the Phoenix. Famous, uh, Phoenix bakery. The Phoenix bakery. Yeah, Phoenix. Yes. <laughs> the Phoenix bakery. The, the famous for that. And then, and then I designed the logo. See that little boy? Oh, oh yeah. 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 So they gave me this watch for. Uh, so anyway, so they were going to open key. another one and probably so I painted this one, but that one didn't do well. The photo. So they said, no, I left it here. It's for the kid. So it's all different things. All different. And this is, I bought it for the studio. This is sketches I do for, for continuity sketches and so forth. Yeah. Is this from photographs or is this from your head? How's that? From photographs? Oh no, this is original. This is just from your head. For the oh, yeah, action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so this is for the, for the movie. The Wild Bunch? Uh, uh, this is, no, this is for something else. Huh? I forgot the name of it. And I remember one director asked me, he said, well, that's a Frank Sinatra picture. They had a fight at the waterfront. They had a fight there. So I want you to do some sketches, but well, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> I love action thing, you know, fighting people, staying, telling each other about Pete Schwartz and so forth. Very gruesome, but it's fun to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, like this one here, see? Uh, an ad you did. I call it an abandoned farm. Mm -hmm. yeah, actually, really actually the farm, you probably so see a lot of, uh, uh, like a stable. Well, it's an old wagon or something like that. Yes. But I eliminated that. I just want a lonely little old building with nothing but a big fence and a lonely bird flying. I'm trying to get the feeling of a very bleak, you know, isolated. So that's what I'm trying to get. And of course, that one there, like a uh, the scarecrow. A scarecrow, for instance. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to get. with bait. Some people using a worm or something bait. Uh -uh, that, to me, that isn't fishing. You know, anybody can, can catch a fish that way. You know, even the amateur. You never don't know what a you know what a fishing pole is. You, you put a bait in it, the fish will, will, will strike on it. You know? So I built my own lure. I like to build my own lure. You know to me the top of the fisherman is the guy who's using a fly rod. That's to me, that's a, that's a fine art of fishing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, after fishing too much, I don't kite. Kite is uh, to me another art form. You know. uh, well, of course, the Chinese invented kite years, years, years ago, you know. So uh, the reason I get started, a lot of people ask me, how did you get into, uh, you know, starting kite? There's a fan of mine that were, that were, uh, he was selling uh, kite line. You know, the line that fly kite, you know? And called a flying tiger, I showed you. 
So we say, hey, Tyrus, we're going to go down to uh, Venice Beach and uh, Kai Fly. Why don't you come and join and have lunch with us? I said, okay. And I looked for him, I looked for him, and I could, I'm real late. I go, he said, what happened to you? I said, didn't you see our flag? He had a flag up on this high. I said, you mean to tell me all these people down here and not expect me to see that little flag like that, you know? So what would you suggest? He said, let me build you something. So, uh, so it's an office called the Flying Tiger. So I, so I made a, a, a wind sock for this one, for that long. And I painted the tiger there with green sands and I done here, Flying Tiger Associate, with long streamer, at about seven to eight feet long streamer. And then I bought a fishing pole about 10 feet uh, and mounted it and stick it in there. You can see a thing from Catalina Island, you know. So that's how it got started. After that, I would build a, 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 a swallow, my first kite. I build it and try it. I take it up to the hill where I live out in the sun and take it out see nobody around, you know. I don't want to embarrass and see a kite doesn't fly. So I look around, nobody I try it, it doesn't fly. I tried for the third time and find it. Gee, I was so happy to work it. And like a dumb jerk, you paint it with too heavy paint, oil paint, so off balance. <laughs> <laughs> and I was very really discouraged, so I can try it again. So I finally built one swallow fly, you know, the fly floppy way. And I thought, gee, one, one fly, so well, why don't I build another one? Fly two of them. In the Chinese, they call it song yang, double happiness. For two swallows to be one flying uh, beside each other. So I built two. Uh, I don't know flying. Uh, and my wife thought it was pretty good flying. Uh, see, a lot of people say, well, did your wife tell you to go fly a kite? And I said, I was just talking about it. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, they wrote a story about it. I said, no, no, that isn't true. Yeah. So anyway, so I built two. You know, and I said, two? Gee, what if I built three? So I built three, and I, oh, three? What if I built another one? Four, five, six? So I had up to 25 <laughs> on a single line. So that was the most I over 25 times. <laughs> Down in the beach one time, there's a lady. Come on, look at that bunch of cats. Look at the bunch of birds up there flying around like that. Why are they all getting over? I said, no, the cat said, no, 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 that one's there flying. I said, the cat, I got one down and I said, well, there's the one. You mean that's what that is? I said, no, I tried to spare many with a hummingbird. Mm. You know the hummingbird, how the wing, how fast it's going, you know? See, you wonder, the thing would go in one minute, you know? And it flies backward and forward and everything, sideways, and so on. Amazing, you know? So I just experimented with that, so you know, can. I, I show you how I get into Warner Brothers for you. <laughs> After Disney, they had a strike, and a motion picture strike at Disney. A friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, uh, Travis Johnson, I asked him, oh, Travis, are you going out or going in? You know? So he said, oh, I don't know. We don't make very, very, very much money here, but uh, Walt seems to be pretty nice. I can stay in. And they said, well, if you stay in, I stay in. What happened? We lost the strike. We lost the strike. I never be able to get back to the studio there. So he called me, he said, Tommy, when they come into Warner for the studio, uh, live action, that means with actors, not cartoons. So I said, gee, I don't know anything about uh, live action. He said, oh, I think you can do it, and so forth. So anyway, and I said, well, why don't you try it? So I make these sketches. You can see it now. You remember the story of Aladdin and it's wonderful lamp? Yeah. 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 All right. So I make these sketches. I make a real long shot showing a lonely fisherman standing on a rock there. Fish, uh, fishing, uh, throwing the net off. Here, here the camera go into a little closer. And then, uh, and then pull. And then pull, and then, and then the shot. This is most of the pictures thing. Shot and showing there's a bottle in it. No, there's a, uh, nothing in it. So if you freeze, jump around. So he threw the net out again. And this time he pull and pull and then pull. And then saw a bottle. A bottle there. He took the bottle. He looked at it, examined it. He tried to get it open. He couldn't get it open. So he got a knife. He pried the cork open. 
I find the smoke coming up. Remember the story? Smoke coming up. I didn't start to look at it. And I then find it start to form, you know, smoke started forming a human being. And all of a sudden the camera pulled back and showed a great big pair calf like he, he looked at it, it's my God, what is this here? You know, very startled. And then, and then the camera go up and look at the job and it's a gigantic thing. See? And they clean him, you know, please let me go, you know, and so forth. So anyway, and then the camera cut, cut into the, showing his face and so forth. And they start to so please don't kill me and so forth, so forth, so forth. So so that's the story for him. All right. So at this day we're doing an um, action picture. So I do some war pictures. So all different things. Ralph Gilbert is a chief draftsman. I showed him and he looked at me. He's very rough and tough and very nice. Actually, he's a very nice person. He said, well, young man, I'd like to work. I tell you what, I give you two weeks try now. If you can cut the mustard, I hire you on full salary. But if you can't shake my hand and go on the front gate, no hard feeling. That's a great word to say. So I was there 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Warner Brothers, uh, I like Warner Brothers TV very much. They're very nice. Of course, like, um, in those days, you know, being Asian, I run through a lot of prejudice. Like Disney, same thing. At Warner Brothers, same thing. Some guys like to me and some guys didn't like. So I take the good and the bad. You know. And then I remember I went into Warner Brothers for about a week. The, the six artists here, and only one by the name of Fritz Rose. He's famous for doing uh, calendar girls. He's very, very good at it, you know. By the way, he's very, very good. He's the only one that asked me, Tyrus, we can have lunch over there, would you join us? So I was, I was really good. I was really excited the one. And all these people here, well, you know, he's the only one that and some guy said, uh, 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 how's the art dip, uh, how's the cafeteria? I said, what cafeteria? Well, did you work at the cafeteria? And some guy was speaking, they never thought that, you know, what an art is looking, the art department, no thing is very hard to get in. At Warner Brothers, I was the only Asian artist. And, yeah. I come through, uh, you know, good and the bad. I remember Tom Carter, you know, he was like, oh, Tyler, don't let them bother you. Heck, if they don't like to work, the hell with them, you know? So, you just do your work, you know. Yeah. So that. So anyway, so that. Uh, that's my life story. Yeah. You're real. You're a real trailblazer, Tyrus. <laughs>